So now let's describe what is the transformation that's taken place. Left 2 and down 4, so we should have y is equal to the quantity x what? Is it minus 2 or plus 2? Plus two. It's plus 2, quantity squared, minus 4. Minus four. Yep, so remember the inside is opposite what we think, the outside is exactly what we think. So the square is the indication for the parabola. Are we good? Okay, the next one, I have a what kind of function? Square root. So I've got y is equal to the square root of? Good, x plus 5, because the horizontal shift is to the left 5, so x plus 5, plus 1. Yeah? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Good, yep, fraction. Is it 1 over x, or is it 1 over x squared? It's 1 over x. So I have y equals 1 over, and is it going to be x minus or x plus something? X minus. 1 over x, and then a minus 2 on the outside, agreed? What's that? Why is it only an x? And not an x squared? Yeah. Okay, so Hannah notices something. She says, uh, what's the difference between the x and the x squared? If it was x squared, they would both be sitting above the x-axis. But, folks, this is not correct. Good, yeah, excellent. It's a vertical flip, so we need to put the negative in front. Remember that the parent function is that you have one of the graphs in that kind of lower third quadrant area and then one up in this first quadrant area. So it is a vertical flip that takes place. Now, whether you put that negative with the top or the bottom or out in front does not matter so long as you have just one negative. Yes. So if the exponent is positive, then it's normal. If it's even, then they will be next to each other. They'll be adjacent. If it's an odd, they'll be opposite each other. Kitty corner. Yep. Okay. Good? Okay. All right. How about number four? Good, so what is the parent function here? What shape are we dealing with? X to the third. So I've got X, and I'm going to put a Q because I know that there's a horizontal shift. So it's going to be what? Minus 3, shift it to the right 3. Plus 1. You know what? If you decided to write like times 2 or times 3, that's fine. That would be one of the infinite options. But I'm really not looking for that piece. Okay? And then what? It's a negative right here because it creates a flip. Now, this is an important element that I want people to understand. Notice that the horizontal flip is the same as the vertical flip, isn't it? For a cubic, the horizontal and the vertical flip are the same. It's actually that way for a number of different functions. So if you did have a 3 minus x on the inside, that would be the same thing as well. Try number 5 on your own. Go. I have y is equal to, and in this situation, it is uh, what? x squared. So it's uh, 1 over x plus 3, that quantity squared, and then it's also up 1. So please make sure I'm looking for the squared when I look at this result. Did you have that, Mr. Aiden? Okay, I just I didn't know if I maybe missed it. Okay, got it. Thank you for your honesty. Okay, uh, the last one. This one's a little bit more challenging. Okay, and sometimes if you don't know how to do a problem, maybe we make an easier problem. You ready to try an easier problem? So, so all of a sudden, this one can be really confusing to people. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I, I don't really know how to do that one, but I know how to do that one, don't I? So, the green one would be y is equal to square root of what? X plus 2. Everybody agreed? So what's different about this is, is it is it a horizontal reflection or vertical? Horizontal. horizontal. That means the negative has to go on the inside. inside. So I apply a negative to the inside. Notice in this situation, as you apply a negative to the inside, we get y is equal to the square root of 
negative x minus 2. So y equals the square root of negative x minus 2. Sir? Uh, negative x plus 2 is incorrect. So, And I'll show you why so you can verify it. Okay. First of all, let's look at a couple ways because Kenny doesn't like to get answers wrong on the test, right? So first of all, you will not be allowed to just graph these on your calculator on the test. That, I mean, that would be kind of easy, right? You know, So we're, we're not letting you do that. But on your worksheet, you sure can. If I try the square root of negative x and I have a minus 2, um, as you check out this graph, I'm going to zoom 6, and you can see that I am correct there. If we change this, we go y equals negative x plus 2. Um, watch this situation, okay? So that's going to actually put it over there. And here's why, Kenny. If we did the following, as you suggested, insert blank, we got y equals the square root of negative x and plus 2. Watch what happens if I factor out the negative. I get a negative quantity x. Well, that's a right 2 shift, isn't it? Whereas if I did the other one, y equals the square root of negative x minus 2, if you do factor out that negative, you get a x plus 2, which tells us we have a shift to the left two units in that situation. See the difference? Yes. Yes, the, yes, the negative is not a, uh, enough to just stand by alone at that x. It must be distributed to the shift. We all good? Okay, please take out your worksheet. So if you flip to the very back, the very last one, okay, notice that I have all these graphs on there. You guys see that? That's what we did right now. Now I know that we're missing this piece right here, but I needed a little bit more than 15 minutes to talk about what we consider even and odd functions. That's what we will end with tomorrow. So you do have a significant amount of time. You have a math teacher here with you who is brilliant. And a Cubs fan. Don't hold that against him. A Bears fan, too. Oh. And an Ohio State Buckeye fan. Hell yeah. Thanks. Yeah, your sister's wearing another Ohio State shirt today. Second one this week. Yeah, we had to have a conversation about that. Um, and you do have your study guide, and, uh, and it's, it's all posted. Again, I'll be here tomorrow morning, Thursday after school, Friday morning. Monday morning, I'll be in the weight room. So you can come find me there.